Hello, and welcome to Gadget Guide USA. Thanks for watching my Aomi Tech UC40 uh, mini projector product review. As you can see here, I have a uh, well, actually, you probably can't see it. I have the uh, retail box sitting on top of the projector here. Uh, as is the norm, we're just going to go ahead and start start with the retail quality box. Uh, it's you know it's pretty generic. It just tells you a home cinema projector, LED. It says HDMI. Has some other stuff. Uh, we have some other stuff on there. It tells you USB 2.0 HDMI. Uh, just gives you some pictures and some of the stuff it does, uh, but really not a whole lot of information on the box. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of it. Uh, now the good part of this is the projector is actually a pretty solid projector, especially when you consider it's under $100 price. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and get to that. Uh, of course, we're going to start with accessories now. It has a pretty standard power cord there. Uh, you can see that right there. Uh, it just plugs into the side here and provides power. Uh, of course, pretty self-explanatory. Other goes to 120 volts AC. Uh, it comes with a remote control here. Uh, you know, not a ton of bells and whistles, but pretty much everything you need. It's got play, pause. You can switch among the inputs, which it does have a lot of inputs. Very impressive. Uh, you have your menu, mute. You know, your fast forward and skip and some arrow buttons. These menu selectors are for, uh, you know, going through the menus and things like that. Escape, pick, which changes the picture's quality. It does have an electronic zoom feature, which is nice. Uh, turn, which I actually didn't play with it. It didn't actually turn the screen, so I don't know what it does. Info, which uh, just pulls up a little menu and then repeat if you're listening to music and things like that. Uh, and then, of course, then you can turn the volume up and down. Uh, it is worth noting that the IR projector, uh, this is the IR receiver on the projector itself. Uh, just to note, you do have to be behind the projector in order for the remote to work. If you're in front of the projector uh, and you're pointing at it, it will not work. It's infrared, so it's line of sight. You have to have direct line of sight directly to this little red cube in order to get it to work. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the other things that came with the box. Uh, this is just a cable, and what this is, is uh, we'll go over the inputs now. Uh, it has a headphone out jack. It does have an internal speaker. I mean, it's not the greatest internal speaker. It's not going to blow your mind with the bass or anything, but it does get the job done. You can understand everything that's going on. Uh, so, But if you don't like the internal speaker, uh, you can actually hook up uh, anything you want through the headphone device. Uh, you know, I can run this actually directly to my stereo. I have a home projector at home, uh, and when I watch movies outside for parties, uh, I actually run this uh, little 3.5 millimeter jack out to my home stereo, uh, and that way I can have surround sound, you know, all the bells and whistles. Uh, this is an AV feature. Uh, it's not very popular in America. You might see them in RVs and things like that, but essentially it's just, uh, it looks, it's another 3.5 millimeter jack, uh, but it comes with this adapter that plugs right in, and then you get the familiar three RCA plugs. Uh, which, I'm, of course, most people are going to be familiar with that, the video and the sound. Uh, so, of course, as RCA plugs. It has an HDMI port for any HDMI input. It has a full SD card, uh, but, of course, you can use micro SD cards as long as you have that adapter that plugs in. I use SD cards regularly. Uh, it has a USB port in, and it has an additional USB port out. Uh, I guess that's not that big of a deal, but I did charge my phone using it. Uh, it's, it charges just like a standard USB port. So, like I said, it's not something that I really needed on the device, but hey, any additional features that add things, uh, you know, that add flexibility, I like. Uh, so maybe one day in the future I might think, hey, you know, at least I can charge my phone with it. Uh, uh, but And we go to the back here, and it has a heat port right here. It also has a heat port right there, and you can hear the fans uh, in order to keep it cool. You have your infrared port there, and then when you go to the other side, we have the power port. We're going to go ahead and look at the bottom here. Uh, if you notice right here, there's a small brass screw. And I still have it in the box, actually. And this is for a height adjustment, and it does come with this little screw. Uh, so basically, as you're sitting there, if you want to adjust the height of the projector this way, uh, that way you can kind of get it at the angle you like. You basically just screw the peg right in there and screw in. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some of the other things on here, of course, it came with a lens cap. Uh, you have your focus adjustment, uh, and that way you can find focus no matter what distance you're at. And I was able to focus from anywhere from 4 to 10 feet away without issue. Uh, so you just basically adjust this, and it'll adjust the focus on your screen. Pretty standard for a projector. Uh, one thing that's not standard for small projectors, especially in the sub-$100 range, is a keystone control. And I'm going to show you the keystone control at the end of this video. I'm actually going to do a live video like I normally do, and to show you uh, actually what the keystone does. And and that allows you, so when you adjust the angle here, you can actually adjust the picture this way uh, so that you keep your ap appropriate aspect ratio and that no matter what angle you decide to angle your projector at, 
uh, you can actually get a really good, perfectly square flat picture. Uh, very important, and that's normally not featured on sub $100 projectors. Uh, overall, this projector offers a lot of value, especially considering its sub $100 price range. Uh, and of course, we have all the buttons here. We have a power button, we have a menu button, we have a back or out of menu button. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is the power button, the menu button, and this is the input button. This is how you adjust from HDM to all the different inputs. Uh, to switch from ASD, A, or AV or RCA plugs, HDMI, USB, and the SD card, I uh, use this button. Of course, it has a simple go back button, which is a, you know, another feature that's normally not found on projectors at this price range, and you have play and pause. And uh, of course, you have your menu keys, so you can uh, work through the menu in an OK button. Uh, overall, this projector was really solid. Uh, well, now we're going to go ahead and go over and talk about the uh, manual. The, uh, the manual I didn't really think was very needed. It's a pretty simple device. I mean, basically you just plug it into the wall, plug your HDMI in, you know, from your cable box, or I actually use my laptop. Uh, I also specifically tested the USB and the SD cards. Uh, I tested .mp4, dot, uh, .mp4, .avi, and, and Matroska video file, which is .mkv. Uh, they all worked really well. Uh, and we'll get more to that as we actually do the live demonstration. Uh, it goes through some of the basics. S it's an SMP, it's a simplified microprojector. I really don't know what that means, but it's there. It gives you some safety reminders. Don't do it in a swimming pool. Don't eat it. Don't smash it. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it gives you a really easy to understand breakdown of what all the buttons and what all the pretty much exactly what I just did right here, that map. Uh, and it shows you what the remote control can do. Uh, you know, how to turn it on, how to prepare it, things like that. Uh, here's an example of the media screen, which we'll get more into when I do the live demonstration. And it tells you about the focus and the keystone correction, uh, which, like I said, keystone correction in a projector under $100 is, no, is not a normal feature. So, of course, I enjoyed that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and flip around to the other side. It just kind of gives you a breakdown of, you know, pretty much what I've already told you, how to hook it up, uh, the HDMI input. Uh, it gives you the projection size for how far you are away. So if you're 220 centimeters away, the projection size will be 72 inches. Uh, and it gives you some of the, you know, the meat and bones as far as, you know, its native resolution is 800 by 480. That's pretty important, how much power it uses. Uh, so overall, it's a really strong, it's a really solid manual. It's very easy to understand. Uh, it was It seems to be written by somebody whose native language was English or had an, an excellent command of the English language. Uh, and it goes over some how to the, how to, adjust through pictures, how to adjust the sound, and all that's available in the menu. Basically, you know, I, what I did is I clicked the menu and played around with everything I could, uh, which is pretty much telling you how to do it. It tells you some of the uh, supported formats, which uh, does all your standard audio, video, and picture formats, MP3, WMA, uh, WAV pictures, JPEG, BMP, PNG pictures, uh, and then as far as video, it has a very impressive offering. It does MP4, AVI, uh, the Matroska video file, MKV, uh, DivX. Uh, it supports the H.264 codec, uh, .move if you're an Apple guy, uh, .mp4, MPEG-1, MPEG-2. Uh, so pretty much, and uh, pretty much anything you want to display. It even displays text files. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to put up a text file on your projector, but hey, uh, you know, I never argue about additional flexibility, especially when you're not having to pay for it, as this is an extremely value-oriented projector. Uh, got some stuff there. Uh, but overall, I was very impressed with the options and the menu and everything for this. Uh, and especially when you consider it's a sub hundred dollar range. I mean, it is 800 by 480, so it's not an HD projector. Uh, but in order to step up from the next step from this, you really need to spend $300. Uh, so in my mind, it's either buy this for you know a little bit under 100 or step up to the $350 range. Anything in between is is you know probably not the bargain that I would be looking for. Uh, so I guess the next step is go ahead to see, go ahead and see this in a live demonstration. And here's our actual live display. I have it set up in my studio here. Uh, the screen can get a little bit bigger, but I'm limited by the actual you know confines of my studio. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty big here, uh, and it still looks great. Uh, this is your original starting menu, or this is the USB stick menu. Uh, as you can see here, it'll read text files. Uh, just to note, it'll only read .txt files if you want to display words. It won't read you know, any proprietary formats like docx or pdf or anything like that. Uh, but you do have the ability to display text files, which is handy. Uh, we have the music, and it plays all your standard formats, you know, WMV, MP3, uh, pretty much whatever you throw at it. And then, then it does photos and JPEG, BMP, and G, uh, JPEG, PNG, and BMP. Uh, and then it does movies, and I tried .mkvs, uh, no issues there. Went without stuttering. It played MP4s, AVIs. Uh, so we definitely like all the options there. And basically, I have uh, my laptop hooked up via HDMI. 
Uh, I've also tested an Android box and a Comcast cable box. They both display without issue, you know, no setup, just plug the HDMI in and go. And I also have a USB stick uh, with some movies and pictures on it. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and start, I guess, uh, with this movie here. And uh, do a shameless plug for another product I promote is actually the Swagway. You can see it at swagway.com. Uh, shameless, I know. Uh, and as you can see, it starts with this little information Hi. menu. And you can go ahead and click click play to make it full screen at any time. Uh, you can click OK and it'll bring up that information menu again Hi. as you can see here and it'll give you yeah, all the options you and you can do all that. Way. Just press down and you this can go back to the full way. screen. As it's you can really see it looks good. Uh, uh, so I mean the red, the way I see it right now, the red is kind of bright. And what we're going to do now is go over the menu options and if you click menu uh, there's quite a few options here. Uh, you can change the, you know, you can restore it to factory defaults if you messed up something you can't figure out. Uh, super color makes the colors a little bit brighter. You can adjust that if you want. Uh, we can go actually go down through the pictures and uh, change, you know, the red, the blue, the green. Uh, you can rotate the screen, which I'm not going to do, but if you have photos like they're in landscape and you want to display them in portrait or vice versa, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and you can adjust the sound and, you know, change whatever you want there. Uh, you can also set the time. Uh, and we went over the menu, so of course we always like menu options and things like that. Uh, in addition, there is a button on the remote control uh, called Picture, and it will cycle through all the picture menus or all the, all the picture settings that you have, uh, if I can get out of this. Uh, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and push the Picture button here, or no, that was the Info button, sorry. Uh, now I'm going to press the Picture button. Uh, it's in the dark, so it's kind of, okay, so, so you can scroll through all your options. Uh, you know, I like it set to user, but that bright red is kind of bright. Uh, but if you don't like the red or the blue is not good enough, of course, you can go through the menu and adjust them. Uh, I do like all the inputs, USB, SD card, HDMI, uh, and I really put it through the paces as far as trying to play as many file types as I could. Uh, as you can see here, this is being played directly off of a USB stick. I also tried SD card. And now I'm just going to go ahead and click the input button and go to HDMI. And I have my laptop hooked up here uh, with a sample video set. And I'm just going to go ahead and play this here, make a big screen. And uh, everything's coming out of the internal speaker. Uh, so what you hear over the internal speaker is actually what you hear. Uh, the internal speaker does a solid job of, you know, uh, presentations and things like that. But if you really want to kick off a backyard barbecue, I would re recommend using uh, the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and running it to a stereo so you can really get some booming bass, uh, you know, and enjoy those movies. I'm going to go ahead and start this over from the, I guess, close to the beginning here. And I'm going to go ahead and click play. As you can see, the screen is really sharp. It looks really well, and it's, I mean, even at this size, it could get quite a bit larger without distortion. Uh, we have the keystone correction there, and I just want to make an example of that. Uh, mainly because projectors under $100 normally don't come with this keystone. Oh, well, that's the focus. Uh, as you can see, you can focus in a lot of areas. And what the keystone is for, you can see it angles it. So if you want to pick it up and display it on an angle, you can adjust it so that no matter what angle you display it on, it maintains that aspect ratio and a perfect square and you don't have any distortion in your picture, which of course we always like that. Uh, keystone for a projector under $100 is very rare, so that's like a really big bonus feature uh, that I definitely enjoyed. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and continue playing here. As you can see, very sharp, really impressive for under $100. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the volume down, and we're going to go ahead and end this. Uh, and I'm just going to go ahead and play this in the background. So I hope you enjoyed my product review today. Comments are always welcome at the bottom of the page. Subscriptions are always appreciated. Thank you. And if you have any specific questions, comments, or suggestions, please email me at gadgetguideusa at gmail.com. Thank you for your time.